Hi, Dr. Steve Dake here, and this is the fifth part of a five part video series on cloud storage. In this video series, we've covered a introduction to what cloud storage is. We've talked about how protecting your data is so important in business and how you actually do that. I've talked about what business shared drives are and how they can save you money and give you a huge amount of security in the data that's getting created in your business. I touched on iCloud, I talked about Microsoft and Google and why I don't recommend Dropbox. And in this presentation, the final part, I'm going to talk about what I recommend you should go for based on what you're currently using. I'm going to go through some suggested solutions for both Google and Microsoft. I'm going to advise you what I think you should go for and then give a bit of a summary at the end. So the viable options, in my opinion, for small businesses and here I'm talking about micro businesses between say north and 20 employees when you're the business owner and you're still doing a lot of the operational stuff yourself and you're looking to just take on more people to help you. That's the sort of size business we're talking about here. Beyond that, it's beyond my current um, knowledge base and therefore I'm not able to advise on that. So I'm going to go through each of these in more detail in a second, but just as an overview, you've got the free Google option. You've got the G Suite Basics, that's a paid option using the G Suite, but the basic version. You've got G Suite Business, which is the one I actually recommend. And that includes that shared drives that I've discussed on many times in this video series. And then you've got the Microsoft option, which the only option I think is viable in Microsoft is that one where you're getting Microsoft Office 365 for business with SharePoint. And I'll go through each of those now. So first of all, you've got your free Gmail option. Pros for this, it is free. You can also sync your files locally. So when you haven't got internet access, you can still work on stuff. Then as soon as you switch on your internet again, it will sync with the cloud and everything will be kept up to date to avoid all those conflicted copies and lost data as we talked about earlier. You can also sync things between different devices. So you can use it on your laptop, your computer or your phone and everything is kept up to date automatically as long as you've got an internet connection. However, the cons of using the free option for Gmail are that you must transfer ownership of every document. Otherwise you are setting yourself up to lose information or documents when that person leaves the company. Or if you use those free company email accounts that I suggested, then there is the possibility that either maliciously or accidentally, someone could delete that information and you will lose it forever. So transferring of ownership is really important. To be able to transfer ownership, you must both have a gmail.com account Obviously they're free to set up, so that's not a big issue. One of the problems is you can only transfer Google Docs. So Google Docs, slides and sheets, you can't transfer PDFs, videos, images, or any other files. And you could also potentially get locked out. If you give somebody the password for a Gmail account, even if it's an account you've set up, they could change the password, they could change the recovery email address, and then you would be locked out of that account forever. The G Suite options, both the G Suite Basic and G Suite for Business, do get around that problem, as well as the Office 365 for Business, as you actually control either the account itself or the data that's saved in that shared drive. And let's explore those in a bit more detail. So option two is going G Suite Basic, which uses Google Drive. This works with all file types. You can recover files as the admin. So if anyone in your company has a licensed G Suite account, then as the admin, you can go in and undelete stuff for, I think it's 25 days once it's been deleted. You can control access to the accounts. You can switch access off. You can change the passwords from the back end. You can't therefore get locked out because you are in total control and you can sync files locally as well. So it's a really good option. The problem with it is that it's actually quite expensive. You need to pay for a license, which is about five pounds per head for every single person in your company. You also have less ability to control what people can do with the files. So for example, can they delete them? Can they move them from folder to folder? Can they download them or print them? With shared drives, you get the ability to control on a much more granular level. So G Suite is an okay option. It works, but it can get expensive. If you do need people to have email addresses so they can send from your company email, or you want someone to be an admin on your account, then you're gonna to have to pay for a license anyway. If you are in that situation, then G Suite is a good option. But now we'll move on to my recommended solution, which is using G Suite for business, which gives you that really important shared drives capability. The great thing about shared drives is all ownership of files and folders is automatic. You don't have to think about it. 
once that a file is put into a shared drive, you as the company own that forever. It doesn't matter what happens to the user account that created it, it's in the shared drive. You control who can access that, you control who can delete it. Even the creator of the file can't delete it without your permission. It works for any type of file. You can, as I said, limit the ability to edit, move or delete or print. And really importantly, it only requires a single license. So you as the business owner set up a G Suite for Business account, you get a shared drives license, and then you can create as many shared drives as you want and add as many free users as you want to those accounts. Also gives you loads of storage. So at minimum, you get one terabyte of storage. Once you've got five licenses, actually you get unlimited storage. So I'll just put that in perspective, the equivalent of going for Dropbox for Business with three licenses, you could have five G Suite business licenses with unlimited storage, so you never run out. So if you do have lots of big, big data that's gonna take up terabytes information, then this is a really cheap way to get unlimited storage. I realize that's not relevant for most businesses, but it's just good to know just in case. So the cons of G Suite for Business, or specifically shared drives. You can't share folders, so you can't actually share access to a folder that's in the shared drive. You can only share access at the drive level. So you've got to think about it slightly differently. And if you're going to share folders, you may combine your shared drives with using the My Drive for G Suite as well. It's a new thing to have to learn. It's a way that you work and control access to shared drives it works differently from a normal folder in say Gmail or in Outlook. So you have to put a little bit of work up front to understand it. But the benefits, I believe, far outweigh that a small amount of learning that you need to do and a bit of reorganization of your folders to make it work in your company. Another thing to consider is that only people with licenses can move files and folders between shared drives. This means that if you want to have somebody else organizing your folders in the background, they would need to have a license. Just need to be aware of that. And also the ability to sync locally, so to actually have files getting downloaded automatically in the background to your computer, you have to have a paid license. And the app that they use is called DriveStream for that. DriveStream is actually a really cool app, just a side point. It allows you to sync files to your computer on a selective basis, but have access to them in your own normal file explorer. So when you go into your computer and you open up say, your, your, your drive on your computer, you can see all of your files in the whole of your Google G Suite account on your computer, but actually they're not taking up any space on your computer because they're stored in the cloud. Then when you want to open one, you just double click on it and it downloads it automatically and opens it up. So it's a really cool way of saving space. Say if you've got a laptop with a small drive, you can have access to everything you want, but only take up a small amount of space on your drive. And then you just sync locally the stuff that you are gonna to need to work offline at any time. I use this because we have terabytes of videos that we've recorded over the past few years. They're not taking up any hard drive space for me, but if I wanna ever watch one, I double click on it and it opens instantly on my computer. It's a really cool thing and it's quite a, a good feature. This here's just a pictorial representation of that setup. You basically got a shared drive. Remember, you can have as many shared drives as you want. This is just showing one. So in our company, we have a shared drive for each member of staff, and that's where they save their work. Once they put their work in there, it's owned by the shared drive. Nobody can edit that, can access it, can delete it without your express permission. So you have total control over who has access to the information in that shared drive. You can even limit the ability to print or even copy information from a document in a shared drive. So the level of control is really good. You have multiple people with free accounts, doesn't have to be Gmail, but if you, Gmail or Outlook, and you can add them to the shared drive and they can access and edit documents. There are certain circumstances when you need additional licenses, and that is if you want an admin to take control of your drives for you, or if you want somebody to have that drive stream so they can sync things offline. We use this for our graphic designers and our video editors so they can sync things in the background and it doesn't slow down their work. Other than that, all of our staff use free licenses and that helps us keep our costs right down. Option four is really for people who are already using Microsoft and don't wanna move. And that is a absolutely valid position to be in. If you're embedded in Microsoft, you've got loads of files and folders and they're shared out between people and you understand Microsoft, maybe you've been using it for years and you're familiar with how it works and you're happy using it, then keep with it. 
Don't change just for the sake of changing it. SharePoint works in almost exactly the same way as shared drives in Google with all the same ability to control ownership and control um, who can edit and access, for example, and print. Again, it only requires a single license. It's almost exactly the same plus points as the shared drive option in Microsoft. So the cons are you've got to actually pay for a license. So you've got to actually pay for it. Um, but if you actually buy one license, as I said, you can have free users. So the cost can be kept down quite considerably. It is a new thing to learn. So like with shared drives, you've got to actually understand the differences and how you're going to use it and how you're going to administer it. So you've got to learn something new. But I really believe the benefits far outweigh the uh, cost of having to actually figure something new out. But lastly, the big con for me for Microsoft in general is its complexity. It does offer more granular control to some degree than Google, but with that comes a huge amount more headache and admin. It's incredibly challenging to, to work with Microsoft. And even though I've got a degree in computing and I spent about 30 years using Microsoft, when I moved to Google, I've never looked back. It is so much easier to use that I really recommend people to consider moving over to Google and over to G Suite. But like I said, don't do it just for the sake of it. If you're already embedded with Microsoft, there's no need to do this. You can move to SharePoint, protect your files and just keep going. Then if you want to move over at some point, doing a full migration isn't actually a massively painful thing to do. The only thing you've got to be concerned about is if you've shared a file, whether it's in Dropbox or in Microsoft, and you've shared it with other people, if you'd migrate it to a different cloud storage, so say to Google, then those shared links will no longer work. So that with that small caveat, then do consider moving to Google if you're looking for an easier solution. So here's a Microsoft solution in a picture, very similar setup here to the Google solution. You've got a SharePoint drive, you've got one or more admin users, exactly the same reasons as with Google, and then you've got as many free staff accounts as you want. So you can have a low cost solution with total control over all of your files. So what option should you go for? If you're already on Microsoft and you want to stick with Microsoft, then stick with Microsoft. Don't make the change just for the sake of it, but do upgrade to SharePoint. That way you are in total control and ownership of the files that are created in your business, but without having the cost of having a license for every single user. It massively reduces the licensing costs, but gives you the control you need. If you're just starting out, use Google. Google is so much easier than Microsoft to get going with and to administer even when you start growing your business and it's cheaper. So I can't see any reason why you wouldn't go for Google and there's a free option that works as I've explained in the previous presentations, but there are certain limitations to that free option. If you are using Google, then consider shared drives. Obviously there's a cost involved in the shared drives, but as I said many times before, similar to SharePoint, you can have one license and then use free licenses to keep the cost down. If you're on Dropbox or another solution that doesn't allow you to transfer ownership or that it's just an additional app to using Google or Microsoft, I would consider moving to Google. This will just simplify your life, put everything in one place and also give you that control over ownership that you need in your business. So in conclusion, the ownership of files is key. You've got to protect the data that is created in your business. It is your business. The assets that are produced by people working for you are what add value to your business. So you need to have control over who can do what with those. And the solutions that I provided in these presentations have hopefully explained your options and why I think certain solutions work better for small businesses. Remember, you don't get any Office apps with Dropbox, so therefore you're gonna to have to have Google or Microsoft to function as a business, so why bother having two apps? That's the reason I don't recommend using Dropbox. My advice is to use a shared drive and then use free company accounts for most of your users. This gives you full control at a really high level, but without having the cost of having a license for everybody. My take home is Google is simpler than Microsoft, full stop. But the caveat is stick with what you know. If you're already embedded in a solution, even if it's Dropbox or Microsoft, then don't change just for the sake of it. There's bigger fish to fry in business and this stuff can be done at a time when you've got the capacity or the money to actually either put some time into doing it right or paying someone to do it for you. So in summary, in this presentation, I've talked about 
the options that are available to you. I've gone through Dropbox, Microsoft, and Google. I've given you four suggested solutions, three in Google and one in Microsoft. I've advised you what to go for, and I've just summed up all of the lectures in a conclusion slide as well. Really hope you found this video series useful. If you have, please share this, please comment, please invite people to the Facebook group if you're watching this in the Facebook group. Just get these videos out there and let's get more people having the data to secure so you don't end up losing the valuable assets that people create for you when you're working in business. Best of luck with this and if I can help in any way, please just reach out. Thanks.